Amen. And let the church say amen. We are blessed and privileged to have this forum and be able to have the mechanism to be able to communicate with each other, to be able to see with each other, to be able to worship God simultaneously uh, in spirit and in truth uh, this morning. We have a lot to be thankful for. We are definitely um, we are blessed, uh, even in this situation, in this country, I do consider uh, our people and uh, this nation blessed, even through uh, the situation in which we uh, find ourselves in. Now, um, we uh, at uh, the Whitlawn Park Church of Christ, we have um, a saying, and this saying is that we are real people with real problems and real solutions in Christ Jesus. That's how we approach uh, our teaching. That's how we approach our interactions. That's how we approach our relationships and uh, even our expectations of ourselves and uh, of others. Real people with real problems. But this has been challenged over the last couple of weeks, and, and uh, it has been challenged. You know, um, you know, with this this whole pandemic, uh, you know, we've you you have to make sure to check yourself and check who you are as a child of God. I I told Sister Assembly that I'm going to go to the store. And I'm going to get um, some food because I don't know how long we're going to be uh, quarantined. And uh, so we don't know what's going on. So I, I go to the store and go to BJ's and think it's going to be the natural, uh, the normal uh, shelves are full of meats and uh, all the vegetables and nice things. I said, we can make a whole lot of gourmet dinners. And I went in there, and BJ's was, were out of meat, no meats on the uh, thing, no, uh, no anything, no fresh meats, no foods, no sausage, breakfast food, nothing. And, and I was going to the, uh, and, and so it, it, was, it was trying, that was trying. But uh, when I got to the bread aisle, it was just one loaf of bread on the on, on the counter, and I was about ready to, to get it, and this man snatched it. He snatched it. And so I had to think for a minute, because something started to click. And I thought about it, and I said to myself, he's real people with a real problem. And I'm about ready to give him a real solution to his problem. And, and, and you know, and that, that was, it was bad because my solution was not the right, the right solution. See, I, t I was getting ready to tell him, I said, You're gonna, I'm going to give you a choice. You're going to make a choice of these two. Either I can teach you the gospel right now or I can shoot you. That's not right, y'all. You know that's right, right? That's not right. So we have to watch and ourselves during this challenging time to remain true to who we are. We are God's people, and so we have to understand that God is still in control. We need to know that. Our text is going to come from Romans, the fifth chapter, Romans, the fifth chapter, uh, and uh, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to really focus in on verse number 12. So I want you to get your Bibles there. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've been uh, doing lessons that uh, are comparing and contrasting the enormous social and physical effects and impact of this deadly invisible coronavirus pandemic with the even more 
prolific, deadly spiritual impact of the invisible disease of sin within men and women. The first two messages in this series has been entitled, the first one is the ignorance of the invisible, and then the second one was the new normal. And they are on YouTube, and they are archived there if you need to go back and review. But today, in Romans 5, we will focus where Paul, through the Holy Spirit, actually knocks this comparison contrast, this thought, out of the park with a comparison contrastive parallelism between the work of Dr. Jesus the Christ in producing sanctification, justification, and ultimately glorification and the work of men through Adam and its results of sin death, and ultimately, spiritual damnation. Now, let's read Romans, the fifth chapter, in verse 12. The Bible says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all men sin. And we're going to look at this, uh, this death, it entered the world. It is a spiritual disease. It is a more than an epidemic, more than a pandemic. It is a, a disease that has affected man ever since the fall. And the Bible says that it is very, very contagious. It said it spread to all men. But really what I want you to really observe here, besides uh, the spiritual truth in this text of the origin and the uh, condition of sin, I want you to look at what Paul really is doing here. It is so amazing because after the word sin in verse number 12, there is, in most transliterations, there is a, a dash or a semicolon there or colon. And then it is a parenthesis. And I want you to realize that he never finished his thought right there. He says, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. So Paul now goes into this this parenthesis, this parenthetical statement that is full, my friends, of excitement. It is full of enthusiasm about the gift of God in his giving us sanctification. Now, sanctification, I want you to realize, is... It means to be set apart, to be consecrated, to be set apart and, and consecrated. He, he gives us this not only sanctification, but he gives us this justification, this universal and complete annihilation of the effects of this sin. So he picks up his thought back 
he picks back his thought up in verse number 18. And in verse number 18, he says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Well, in his parenthetical statement, basically what he is trying to communicate is that even though all have sinned, and the Bible teaches this very clearly, all have sinned in Romans the uh, third chapter in verse 23 and come short of the glory of God. And we also know in Romans the sixth chapter in verse 23, he says that the wages of sin is death. Even though we know that, he is telling the Romans beyond any shadow of a doubt that God has prepared a way that we can overcome that we do not have to fall under the strict law and dominion of this sin. And ultimately, he is going to deliver us. But what he is doing through Christ Jesus right at this moment is we are in quarantine. You see, sanctification is setting us apart. He's putting the children of God, those who love Christ, those who want to serve God, he's putting you in a spiritual quarantine. My topic and lesson for this morning is quarantined. Now, so many of us don't like that quarantine, but sometimes we need quarantine. The, so, the concept, let's just look at the definition of quarantine. Quarantined is a state, a period, or place of isolation, of separation for which people who have been exposed to infectious or contagious diseases. The concept, my friends, have both positive and negative connotations in Scripture and in spiritual application. Quarantine. My friends, the truth is that most of God's faithful, most of those who served God faithfully in Scripture were quarantined for one reason or another during the course of their life before or while in service to God. As a matter of fact, we need to probably use this period of quarantine physically and quarantine ourselves spiritually so that we can become stronger and more viable children of God. Now, sometimes God's children and, and others were quarantined for positive reasons and other times for negative reasons, which we will look at a couple of them. But nevertheless, God understands this whole concept of setting us apart, of quarantining even in Scripture. My friends, the Bible talks about uh, Abram early in his lifetime in Genesis, the 12th chapter in verse number 1. Before he became Abraham, he was Abram. God didn't use him as Abram, but he told him to do something. He told him, I need you, in verse number one 
of Genesis, the 12th chapter. What did he say, brother? What did he say? Read that. Now the Lord had said to now Abram. Now the Lord, what did he say? He said to Abram, get out of your country. He says, I want you to get out of your country. From your family. From your family. And from your father's house. From your father's house. He says, this is a quarantining. It is a sanctification I am setting you apart and I need you to get away from this element that you're in right now. Now you know here at Woodlawn Park we use the Bible as an application, an example. Some of us need to get away mm -hmm. from some elements that are surrounding us all the time. Now unfortunately we are in shelter in place right now so you may not be able to get away from something but we're talking about over the long haul the application is that sometimes God is trying to quarantine us he's trying to help us to get away from the elements that are pulling us down from the disease and the effects of the impact of things that are pulling us away from him he told Abram I'm going to use you but I need you to get away he says from your what read from your family from your family from read your father's house from your father's house to read a land that I will show he you. says to a land that I'm going to show you and in your study this week I want you to realize and the study of how long he had to stay away. This wasn't a one or two year thing. There are other examples in scriptures in which I'm just going to give you uh, uh, the reference, but I, I just want you to realize in the scriptures in the Old Testament, they had what you call cities of refuge. Now, cities of refuge were, were places where you were able to get away to. Basically, it was a, a, a separation, a quarantine site. Uh, sometimes it was quarantined uh, because of sickness. But a lot of times it was quarantined because some people did some things that were mistakes. They didn't really want to do. Oops, I killed you. In Numbers, the 35th chapter, in verse number 11, Numbers, the 35th chapter, in verse number 11, it talks about these uh, cities of refuge that you can read. Other times, they had quarantine camps for those who were sick, particular, particularly with uh, this one disease called leprosy. And they were quarantined, and God told them to take them away from the people because God knows that even in a physical sense that sometimes if we are sick and, we ha and there's a possibility of contagion, of getting a disease and everything, we need to have good sense, sound judgment, and we need to get away from each other. We all, we got work to do here. All of us can't go away from here the same time. That's in Leviticus, the 14th chapter, in verse number 3 for your notes. Leviticus 14 and 3, as well as Numbers, the 5th chapter, and verse number 2. Israel, my friends, suffered plagues and, uh, and other type of quarantines. One time in the camp of Israel, there was sin in the camp. In Joshua, the seventh chapter, in verse 11 through 13, I want you to get that. Joshua, the seventh chapter, verse number 11 through 13, the scenario went is that God had sent his people to fight and they got utterly destroyed in the battle. And that they were supposed to be God's people. And they were not supposed to lose that battle. But they lost that battle because we had something in the camp. And if something was that disease that we had talked about earlier. It is a ravaging disease and it was sin. In the Bible, in Joshua, the seventh chapter, verse number 11, he told them before to go through the camp and find out who and what 
was the issue. And in verse number 11, what does the Bible say? Israel has sinned. He says, Israel has sinned. Read. They have also transgressed my covenant. He says, they have transgressed my covenant. Which I what? commanded them. Which I've commanded them. For what? For they have even taken some of the accursed things. He says, they have taken some of the accursed things. And have both and have stolen, stolen and, deceived, and deceived. And they have also, they have also put it what? among their own stuff. Put it among their own stuff. Keep reading. Therefore, in verse 12. He says, therefore, the read. The children of Israel. The children of Israel. stand before their enemies. He, you cannot stand. Read. But turn but turn their backs before their enemies. He said, but turn their backs. Read. Because they have become doomed. To because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I Neither, be with you anymore. Neither, he said, will I be with you anymore unless, unless you destroy, you destroy the, accursed from you. the cursed items from among you. You're going to have to do some quarantining, some purging. You're going to have to cleanse out. You're going to have to wash away. You're going to have to do a lot what you need to do in order to get where God needs you to be. Did you read through verse 14? Nope. 13 says, get what up. What does it say? Get up. Get up. Sanctify the people. He says, look at this. Verse 13, he says, get up, get up, sanctify the people. get up and sanctify, and, set up right, and say, separate, mm -hmm. set apart, quarantine the people so that what read and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. My friends, read the story in your own time. We could go on and on, my friend. I remember, you know, the Bible said one time Paul preached the midnight. Now, we don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about you going home today. You are already home. That's right. I could preach the midnight. That's right. I don't, no, nobody looking at me all funny and nothing else. It's fine. Just preach. Oh, I love this. This is fun. But anyway, he says, sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. I need you to go and look at what is happening. Oh, my friend, there were other quarantines. I told you sometimes it's for negative reasons, sometimes positive reasons. We don't really understand that, that Noah, my friends, and his family, yeah. Noah and his family were, were quarantined. That's right, because the earth was doomed. God had said in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that he's going to destroy, destroy the whole earth by water. And that he did. But the Bible says that Noah, with Noah and his family, it says he saved him. He saved Noah and his family. But I want you to look at Genesis, the seventh chapter, and verse number one. Genesis, the seventh chapter, and verse number one. Mm -hmm. Then I'm thinking now about Hebrews. I'm thinking about Hebrews, the 11th chapter as well. But read Genesis, the seventh chapter, verse number one. What does the Bible say? Genesis 7 mm -hmm. and verse number one. Read. Then the Lord said to Noah. He said, the Lord said to Noah, what? Come into the ark. He says, come into the ark. You and your household. You and your household. Hold it there. Someone else get Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And we only got a few people here. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And, and verse, um, I want you to get verse number number seven. But go and you continue to read where you are. Genesis, where you are. Genesis 7, 1. What did he say? Go into says, the ark. Read. In all of your household, because I have seen that you are righteous. He says, me. I have seen that you are righteous before me in, before this, generation. Me in, in this, this generation. generation. And they went into the ark. The Bible later says in Hebrews chapter number uh, 11 and verse number 7. What did it say? Read. By faith, he Noah, said, by faith, Noah be being divinely faith. warned of, of things, things not seen, seen as yet. What happened? What did he do? He says, prepared an ark for the, ark for the of saving house. of his household, by, the which, he by the which the Bible says he condemned he the world, the world and, became the and became the heir. He became the heir of a righteousness, which is, all, which is by faith, to all those who want to serve God. He is an example to us. God set him apart. He set, sanctified him. He uh, consecrated him and his family. And he had to obey, though, still what God had commanded 
My friends, there have been other instances of, of quarantines in, among God's people for your notes. There were personal and uh, environmental cleanliness. Now, when you read this, it's going to be something. Deuteronomy chapter number 23, verses 9 through 14. Deuteronomy chapter 23, excuse me, I think it is, yes, 23, 9 through 14. Now, this situation, he tells you when you go out and you get all dirty and you're all among those people who are, are, are not God's people. Sometimes you're among the, the, those who are doing all sorts of things. And he says that when you come back, he said, don't just come back into the camp. Don't just come walk in here with all those smells, all that way you got, you know, the way the way you walk, the way you talk has changed. Everything has changed. The way you look has changed. Everything is, he says, stay outside the camp, get yourself together, wash up, cleanse your mind, cleanse your body, then you come back into the camp. Any scripture you want to read there? Which right, verse, verse you want to read? Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse number 9. What did he say? Read. Deuteronomy 23, 9. What did he, he say? When read. the army goes out against your enemies. He said, when you go out against your enemies. Then keep yourself from every wicked thing. Come on, read. If there is any man among you. He says, if any man unclean, among you. What? What? By some occurrence in the night. By some occurrence in the night. Then he shall go outside the camp. Go outside. He what? shall not come inside he the camp. He said, don't come inside the camp. You are quarantined. You are quarantined. I want you to understand that God understands this concept about quarantine. My friends, again, in uh, Joshua, the second chapter, God's people were conquering the land of Jericho. And they went uh, up to Jericho. Jericho was a fortified city. It was no way, my friends, I don't think, that they thought at first that they could conquer Jericho. But God told them what to do. But even in Jericho, in Jericho, there was a person and a family that God would quarantine, would set apart. And her name was Rahab. And he sanctified her in the city that was doomed. Oh, the city was doomed because God said it's going to be destroyed. But in Joshua, the second chapter... And verse number 12, what did the Bible say in Joshua's second chapter? And verse number 12, read that. It's Joshua's second chapter, verse 12. What do you say? Read. Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness. Yes, this is Rahab you, speaking. Read. That you also will show kindness to my father's house. Come on, read. And give me a true token. Come on, read. And spare my father, my mother, my Come brothers, on, read. my sisters. And all that they have. What? Read. And deliver our lives from death. Yes, read. So the men answered her, our lives for yours. Yes, read. If none of you tell this business of ours. That's right. And it shall be when the Lord has given us the land. Yeah, read. That we will deal kindly and truly with you. Read on, read. And she let them down by a rope through yes. the window. I want you to remember that. Was he, on the she let wall. them down by what? A rope. Mm -hmm. and, and that rope was what? He says, scarlet on the wall. Read. Mm -hmm. Go on, continue. In verse, in verse 16. Yes. And she said to them, Read. get to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Yeah, read. Afterwards, you may go your way. Come on, verse read. Verse 17, so the men said to her. What did the men say? We will be blameless of this oath of yours, yes. which you have made us swear. Unless when we come into the land, he says, he says, this look, line of scarlet We're going to be blameless. He said, we're going to be blameless mm -hmm. of this. He said, meaning, we have, we, God is God is, God is consecrating you. Mm -hmm. you, you are being, you're being quarantined. And, but he says we're going to be blameless of this. Mm -hmm. That means we're not going to be responsible if, this, if these things do not happen. He said, I want you to bind, read. What did he say in, in verse 18? Yes, read. Unless when we come he into says, the land. He said, when we come into the you land, bind this line you bind of this line the of scarlet cord through the window. Mm -hmm. Which through, you let down. Through which you let us down. Mm -hmm. Unless you bring what With else? Your father, he your said, mother, bring your, your father. Bring your, your mother. Household to bring your, home. your brothers. And all your household. Where? To your home. To your, your home. home. And then he tells them. 
that you got to stay inside, inside the home, inside. My friends, you don't know what's happening here, but God is setting up a foreshadow of what it is to be in Christ Jesus. He's telling us, I've got a quarantine place. I have a consecrated place, and it is covered, the Bible says, by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see that scarlet line that was hanging out of the window in Jericho in Rahab's house is actually, it, it is a symbolic of the blood of Jesus that is covering the church of Jesus Christ. In Acts, the 20th chapter, and verse number 28, he tells us that Christ purchased the church with his blood. And my friends, when we are in his spiritual body, which is the church, we have been quarantined. We have been sanctified. Not only that, we have been justified and we will one day be glorify. I want you to understand that God is in control. He has been in control since the beginning of time. I don't have time to go through some of these others. I'm going to have time to go through some of these other quarantine uh, uh, illustrations. But coming out of the land of Egypt, since you're not here, coming out of the land of Egypt, we're going to keep preaching. Oh, this is good. He says, coming out of the land of Egypt, in Exodus, the 12th chapter, verse number 12 and 13, coming out of the land of Egypt, I see the, the, that whole place was quarantined when Pharaoh was rebellious against what God's directives were of to free his people, free the children of Israel at that time. And Pharaoh got rebellious. So God sent forth what is called the death angel. But you, even those who were God's people, even those who were God's people had to stay indoors. They had to stay indoors indoors. And in verse, uh, what verse you want to read, my brother? 12. Verse number 12 mm -hmm. of Exodus, uh, the 12th chapter. What did he say? Read. Well, I will pass through he the says, land of Egypt He on says, the night, I on that will night. pass through the land. This is God. He said, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt uh, on that night. And, I will and he said, I'm going to send a strike on all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and, beast, and against all and the gods of Egypt, against all the gods of judgment. Egypt, I will execute judgment. He says, "Why? I because am the Lord. I am the Lord." And I want you to understand that that means something. When you serve God, you serve a mighty creature. You might have to stay indoors sometime. You might have to stay indoors for a little while. What did he say in the he next verse? In verse? Verse 13. 13. What did he say? Now Read. The blood shall be a sign he for, says, for you. He says, "There shall be what? A, a sign. A sign for you." For you, the, on the blood, houses where you are. I want you to understand, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses and where you I were. The blood. So when uh, the death angel come, this is what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to take the blood of the lamb. And see, that is another foreshadow of our great God, Jesus Christ. You see, the blood of Christ covers us from all sin. You see, it's a perpetuation you know, the Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 25, that the blood of Jesus Christ is a perpetuation, a covering. But anyway, back here, which is a foreshadow, he says, I want you to do this. I want you to take the blood of the lamb and I want you to do what? I want you to mm -hmm. put it on the lintel mm -hmm. of the door. Read on. What did and he say? I, and when I see the blood. He said, when I, look what God said. God said, when I see the blood, I will when pass I over you. see 
the blood, he says, I will pass, pass what? Over you. I will pass over, over you. you. He said, you're not going to be affected. You're not going to have this plague. You're not going to have. Now, you see, we, are, we deal with, see, we, we, we got a lot of times we like to deal with flesh and blood. But God now, right now, you know, we, we may die. We not may die. We're going to die. Mm-hmm. We're going to die. Time. So, so don't, don't, don't worry Amen. about physical death. Talk about Come on, even though you need to protect yourself, even though you need to be sensible, even though you need to have common sense physically, God wants you to take care of your body. It's the spiritual death. And you see where the blood of Christ is, is over his church. He covers the blood. He covers the church with the blood. This was a foreshadow. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. My friends, keep reading that Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses uh, 12 through 13 and down. And verse 20, go to verse 20. Can you go to verse 20? Can you go to verse 20? Mm -hmm. Exodus 12, verse 20. What did the Bible say? Read. He shall eat nothing leavened. He says, look, not only that, he says, I want you to make sure that you have your dietary things in order. Keep yourself together. You know why? You see, God was prepared. They were about ready to leave. He wanted them in the right condition to leave. You're about ready to go. You see, but you're quarantined right now. Don't worry about it. Take care of yourself. Get yourself ready spiritually. Get yourself ready mentally. Because we got work to do, church. The church has Work to do. My friends, Adam. Adam got this thing rolling with sin. The Bible says uh, it started with Adam in our text. And he, in Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 12, as we, we come to a close, we've got to close. He says in verse number 12, of Romans, and we looked at that. Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 12. He says that, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all has sinned, and then we got the parentheses, Drop down to 18 is the continuation of that thought. Therefore, as through one man, offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification and life. God tells us in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1 that there is therefore there is therefore now no condemnation no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus to those who are sanctified who are quarantined, who are washed, who are in Christ Jesus, who who do not walk according to the flesh, he says, but according to the Spirit. But the Bible says in verse number two, what? For the law of the Spirit of Spirit of life in Christ Jesus Jesus have made made you free from the law of sin. Of sin and death. You've got to be in Christ. To be in Christ is to be in his spiritual body, which is the church. You can find that in Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 24. 
Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 22 and 23. The spiritual body of Christ is his church. And we know that Christ established his church in Matthew, the eight, uh, 16th chapter, in verse number 18. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church, my sanctuary, my area of quarantine for you. And not only did he say that, he says, you're quarantined. Why? He said, because the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Get quarantined. Get in the body of Christ. Get in the Lord's church. You need to understand the remedy for the greatest disease ever known to men. My friend, coronavirus had nothing, had nothing on the sin problem. Nothing. He tells you in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he is a new creation. He said, all things have passed away and behold, behold all things have become, new. have become new. And lastly, as we turn to Ephesians, Ephesians the first chapter and verse number 3. He tells us about, again, this quarantining. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In Where? Christ. In, Christ. in Christ. To be in Christ is to be in his body. To be in his body is to be in his church. There is but one church, the Bible says, in Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 4. There is one body, one Lord, one faith, even you are called, and the Bible says, and one hope of your calling. Yes, I want you to see that. One spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one faith one and one baptism. That baptism, my friends, puts you into the body of Christ. You cannot get to the place where quarantining takes place if you not baptize, because God says baptism puts you into that place in a number of places, Acts 2, 38 to be one. But another one, it is in Romans, the first, uh, the sixth chapter, Romans sixth chapter and verse uh, number one. Oh, my friends, Romans the sixth chapter and verse number one. What I want you to get them. What shall we say then? Shall Listen to this. What shall we say then? Shall, shall we continue, we continue in, sin? in sin? That me about? Continue in that disease. Continue in that uh, plague that's going to cause eternal damnation. Shall you continue in that, that grace may abound? He says, certainly not. How shall we that have died to sin, to sin live, any longer, live therein. any longer therein? No, ye no not. you're not. That so many of that us, so many of us as were what? Baptized, baptized into, into Christ. We're baptized, were baptized into, into death. Into death. He says, buried. therefore we, we are, are buried, buried with him by baptism, with him by baptism into, into death. death. That yeah, like, like Christ, Christ was, raised from, was raised from the glory of the Father, even so, even we so walk in the newness should we to walk in the newness of life. In the newness of life. In our close. Yes, we're going through uncertain times. But it's only uncertain for this world. Jesus already prepared a place for you. He says, that's right, he says that, that where I am, that you may come. Don't put all your eggs in this life's basket. Look to Jesus, who can give us eternal life. There was a couple who wanted to. to follow Christ, and they really wanted to work in the ministry. So they called the preacher and his wife over to talk about uh, how they could, could work and how they could be proficient. And 
when they invited the preacher and, and wife over, they were talking to them, and they kept mentioning how their life was so uncertain for them because their the husband, he had multiple cirrhosis. So they kept on talking, and, and they kept it's talking about, you know, everything is so uncertain. Everything is so uncertain. And after many times of hearing that, the preacher couple, they, they stopped and said, listen, all of our lives are uncertain. God tells us in James 4, 14, whereas you do not know what will be tomorrow. You don't know. He says, what is your life? It is nothing but a vapor that appeareth for a little while and vanisheth away. He says, also, the Bible says, it is appointed. In Hebrews 9, 27, under man wants to die. Hebrews 9, 27. And he says, after that, he says, the judgment. He says, all of our lives are uncertain. You don't know what's happening. You don't know what's going to happen. But you can trust God. You can trust God when he tells you, I've got a place prepared for you. That all you need to do is to look to me, the author and finisher of your faith, captain of your salvation, alpha and omega of this present universe. He said to her, all of our lives are uncertain. You are just blessed and happen to know it. You see, everybody else just run around because they don't have this type of disease, this type of deficiency, this type of abnormality that you have. They just walk around thinking that they have a control on life, but you're really blessed. Just follow Christ. Be encouraged, my friends. We don't live our lives in fear. God has not given us, he says, the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. I hope you've gotten something out of today's message. You've heard the the gospel of Christ. If you believe it, you're willing to repent. That means change your mind to where you think is right, to where God says it is. Amen. Confess Jesus as Lord and then be baptized for the remission of your sins. In baptism, God adds you to the spiritual body, those who are the elect, he says, those who are sanctified. He adds you to the body of Christ, the church. That's Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. This is my prayer. We're going to go to God in prayer at this time. Dear God, our Father, we come to you thanking you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to worship. And thank you, Father, for the mechanisms that you have given us to do that by. Father, we pray that your word has fallen on honest hearts and ears that we are encouraged to know that no matter what happens in this world, you have already designed and prepared a place for those who love and obey you. It's our desire, Father, that we who know already may continue to strive for it and toward that land. And our prayer is also for those who are just getting a glimpse of your word We'll continue to listen, to learn, and ultimately obey 
you as their great God and Father of heaven. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song at this time. Mm -hmm. Life can be a confusing journey, and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? At Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can't, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost. One that has faith in God's power, no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, and motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world.